Hello, folks. It's Al Nigren from the New Jersey F International Film Festival here with a series of filmmaker interviews, and we're back again with more of those for you this summer. Before I bring on our guest, I wanted to just let you know that the New Jersey International Film Festival will be taking place on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings between May 31st and June 16th, starting at 7 p.m. in our state-of-the-art facility, Voorhees Hall, Room 105, on the College Avenue campus of Rutgers University. We'll be premiering over 25 films. We'll be having 20 filmmakers present. And we'll also have free food, courtesy of Jimmy John's, at each one of the screenings. So come and check it out. You get a lot, of, a lot for your $10. Today, we have a wonderful guest. Sarah Friedland, the director of The Rink, is here to talk about her wonderful documentary. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's a, a wonderful pr pleasure to have you because The Rink is a film that I fell in love with when we saw it as part of the jury, and primarily because it really bridges cultures, and that's one of the missions of our festival. We're very much a humanist film festival. Mm. So tell us a little bit about this documentary. Um, so The Rink is about Branchbrook Park Roller Rink in Newark, New Jersey, which is one of the last urban roller rinks in the tri-state area. And it really looks at this roller rink as a microcosm for the city of Newark and also kind of for the country as a whole. Mm. Um, so we're really interested in the space of this roller rink as being kind of one of these beautiful places where people can come together and create community. And one of these places that, you know, there's really not a lot of them left. Um, they're large spaces, they cost a lot of money to run, and so more and more cities, they're disappearing. Yeah. Um, so the film kind of looks at the roller rink and then follows two specific characters in the roller rink. I almost felt as if the roller rink was an excuse to talk about people. Yeah. And you do focus on a couple of people in particular. Tell us a little bit about them. So the two kind of stars of the film are um, a man by the name of Graylin, who's a gospel skater. So he kind of looks at roller skating as a form of praise and worship. Um, so there's one night at the roller rink where all these people come and they, you know, they really see it as a religious experience. Um, and then it follows a woman named Bonesaw, that's her roller derby name, and she's part of the Garden State Roller Derby Girls. Um, so these two people, although they seem very different, um, when you first see them, you know, Bonesaw's kind of associated with punk rock, and she's got tattoos, and she's really tough, and Graylin is this, like, very, you know, loving, peaceful father, um, religious man. Um, but really, they, they share this history um, of kind of violence and drug abuse that the rink is really a refuge from for both of them. So. Yeah, I mean, that's what I liked about it, because Newark is almost a kind of person, too. Yeah. Newark yeah. has this bad rap as a place right. you don't want to go to, um, and yet this roller rink has Caucasian night, yeah. and, you know, where <laughs> white folks come, and there's also evenings where you have African-American communities coming, and yet at the same time, the rink, uh, you know, shows how these people kind of grow out of their problems right. and find themselves, and it seems like the city is doing the same thing. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think one of the really interesting things that we kind of try to show in the film is that, um, so those two nights, the roller derby night and the gospel night, meet on the same evening. So you'll have the gospel skate night people leaving, who are predominantly African-American people from Newark, um, and then the roller derby girls come in, and they're predominantly white women from the suburbs, although some of them are also from Newark. Mm. And it's it's basically like two ships passing in the night. Mm. There's not a lot of interaction. And so I think it really speaks to um, the segregated history of Newark mm. as a city and kind of uh, present-day identification of downtown Newark, and also kind of s the segregation of American cities in general. Um, that's something that people don't really talk about a lot. Well, you're a New York City filmmaker. How did you get involved with this project since it's across the river? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I live in Queens. Um, not too far, but far enough. Um, so I made this film with my co-producer, Ryan Joseph, who um, at the time we made the film was living in Newark. Mm -hmm. And he was actually the um, staff photographer for the Garden State Roller Derby Girls for a number of years. Oh. So he knew them and kind of was like, oh, Sarah, we should make this film about the Derby Girls. And then Whip It came out, and we were like, oh, we mm -hmm. can't do that now. Um, but then we visited the rink, and the rink itself was so interesting, and there were all these interesting kind of subcultures meeting in this space. 
um, that we just decided to. to yeah, because the whippet is completely different, I think, from your film, yeah. which it aims to educate, not exclusively to entertain, right. which mm -hmm. I think is wonderful. And I think your film also entertains at the same time. I thought the soundtrack was terrific as well. It really moves the film along, Thank you. and it keeps your interest as well as you move and shift yeah. from space to space, from person to person. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. We have about two minutes left in our interview. So um, just also since you brought up the soundtrack, that's done by this really fantastic composer, um, Brian Time, who's doing a lot of film scores now, and he really did a great job. Mm. So I just want to give a shout out Absolutely. to him. Absolutely. Um, so I'm a filmmaker. This is actually my second feature. I'm working on another feature that I'm co-producing with um, S.E. Casey called Jeepney, which will be out hopefully in the fall. Great. Um, and I, you know, I'm a documentary filmmaker. Um, have been doing it for about 10 years now. Um, and I also teach, um, I'm a professor at John Jay College, um, where I teach film and kind of art-related stuff. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for coming. And thank folks, you. if you want to see this wonderful film, it's part of our opening evening on Friday, May 31st, beginning at 7 p.m. There are three short films prior to Sarah's film, The Rink. And you get a lot for your money because we'll have two other filmmakers there. The way our programs work, each filmmaker that comes gets to introduce their film. And then at the end of the evening, there's a general Q&A session with the filmmakers. So, you know, our filmmaker is very grassroots, very easy, accessible. It's not a pretentious festival, and we want folks to come and interact with the filmmakers. And a number of the folks that have come to previous film festivals have found their way onto projects for the filmmakers next offering. So it's a wonderful way to get out there and network. And it's also a great way to interact with the filmmakers and learn more about their projects. So please come and join us. If you'd like more information, go to our website, which is njfilmfest.com. Or you can call us at 848-932-8482. Hope to see you at the movies. Thank you for watching. <laughs>